everybody and welcome again to another Kids and Youth Check-In. So good to have you with us. Well, uh, I've kind of lost count of what day it is and what week it is, um, but here we go. We've got an exciting week planned, so much to look forward to. Here we go. Hey everybody and welcome to Kids and Youth Check-In, which I've already said and here is my special guest. Who are you? Well, hi Rick. It's so lovely to see you and lovely to see everybody today. My name is Ems and we haven't been coming to the church for very long, but it's great to be part of Kids Check-In today. Ah, so good. I am really loving watching you do quite a lot of stories on Instagram. Yeah. Why are you reading stories on Instagram during lockdown? Well, I think partly because I was feeling like I was missing my job because I work in a school um, as a listener. Oh, nice. um, but I think as well, I was thinking about all those children who weren't getting stories from teachers and all those parents who were thinking, oh, I just need five minutes to have a brew and a bit of a rest. So I thought, Do you know what? I'm going to read some stories for a bit of fun. Nice. And you read one of my favourites the other day from Susie Poole. Yes, I, I used did. to read that to my little girls when they were really yeah. small so oh loved it so um ems we're gonna crack on uh, i know that um team hancock have played the game today yes we uh, did that's something very exciting to come up with and uh, and we're also going to unpack the bible so let's crack on <laughs> well my absolute favorite film would you like a clue here it is here it is what do you think? Yes, my friend. It's Toy Story 1, 2, 3 and 4, but obviously mainly 1. Well, I'm glad you asked, but my, my absolute favourite is this. Dairy milk. It's amazing. But do you know what I really love doing is I love sharing my chocolate, Rick. So... I've thought about this really hard, I've prayed about it, and I feel like God is saying, share your chocolate with your friend. So Rick, do you like dairy milk? Yes. Do you? Well, today is your, today is a blessed day for you, my friend, because I am going to share this via virtual imagery. So I'm gonna send it across the screen. Are you ready? And you can take it. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Take it, take it, take it. <gasps> Did you get it? Well, I've got lots of favourite animals, but one of my top favourite animals is actually this. The, the gorgeous little collie. I've always wanted a sheepdog, but I've never really been allowed one. But when I'm an old lady, that's what I'm going to have. I'm going to have a little sheepdog like this. This is Esther's sheepdog called Ollie. So I'm going to have one of these when I'm big girl. So my dad was very, very busy when we were younger, but one day he went out and bought me a special doll. And because he bought it for me, not my mum, not my grandma, it was a really, really special doll to me. And I kept that doll for a very, very long time. In fact, I tried to find it today. It is somewhere in my house, but I can't find it. But it was one of those that had a really beautiful little face. And I remember cuddling it at night time. So it was very special to me. So my fable, fable, my favourite Bible character is in the book of Ruth and it is actually Ruth herself. I love her because she's an outsider, she's not somebody who was really popular but she rocked up into a new place with lots of confidence and faith and she actually helped people around her and I love her love for other people, I love how unselfish she is and I love how hard working she is and how God blesses her and uses her to change in fact, a whole nation. It's that time again and it is the weekly challenge and uh, as we've said uh, the Hancocks have taken part in our challenge. What you need are uh, three ping pong balls or light balls and uh, five cups which are filled with water. Probably a game for outdoors uh, this one. Uh, you can play it against each other or you could see if you could do it faster than a minute. Um, so let's go over to uh, the Hancocks and see how this unfolds. Over to you guys. Welcome to the Water Cup Ping Pong Challenge. On the white team, we have Tom, we have Esther, and we have me. 
And on the red team, we have Sam, we have Ben, we have Ams. The object of the game is to get one ping pong ball each across the five cups into the final cup by blowing no hands. First team is victorious and shall forever be known as the ping pong water cup challenge champions of the Hancock family. <laughs> Are you ready? Three, two, one, go! Go Sam, go Sam! Yes! Under, under, under! Go Sam! Okay, yes, yes, go, go, go. Someone film, someone film, someone film. This is cheating. This is cheating. Go, 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 go. Come on. Go. Oh, oh. Yes, yes. Go on, Ben. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Spirit comes down. A few days after Jesus went up to heaven, the disciples were together in a room. They were waiting for God to send the Holy Spirit to help them live in a way that would please God. Whoosh! The disciples heard a loud noise. It sounded like wind, but that didn't make sense. They were in a ha inside a house. Whoosh! Suddenly, little flames of fire appeared above everyone's heads. Then the people started to speak in different languages, languages they had never learned. The Holy Spirit had come, just as Jesus had promised. People outside the house heard all the noise and ran over to see what was going on. Some of the people were from other countries. They could understand the languages that the disciples were speaking. They were so surprised to hear them speaking in their own language about how good God is. Then, when Peter saw how surprised the people were, he began to talk to everyone who had gathered. Friends and neighbours. We aren't crazy. We love God. And God has sent the Holy Spirit to fill us with his power and love. God wants you to know how much he loves you. He wants you to follow him and he wants to be with you too. The people listened to Peter. That day, 3,000 people decided to follow Jesus. It was a great day. Right, okay, so um, it's Bible check-in time. Grab your Bible. I've got mine the wrong way around. There you go. And uh, you're going to have to find Acts 2, which is what we are going to look at, because today is Pentecost. And um, this is probably one of my favourite chapters what about you yeah i think it's it blows me away every time i read it rick i love it i know i get all goosebumpily and like oh so good so um let's just kind of pull out some big chunks from uh from this uh, obviously i'm not going to rip my bible that would be terrible um so they're waiting and i talked with kira last week about waiting and waiting yeah. is boring and yeah, you know, it's like, it's like, I don't even want to wait for my Amazon delivery anymore. It's got that bad, <laughs> you know, I want it yesterday. Yeah. Um, but they're waiting, and yeah. then it says, suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. Have you ever been in a windstorm, Ems? Um, yes, I have. I've been up a mountain and not been able to hear anybody around me because the wind was so strong. Wow. A bit crazy, you know what I mean? Let me show you what I mean, actually. Um, okay. So, have you ever been in a place where suddenly the wind is, is this loud and you... <laughs> and then, you know, you, you really want to say something. So, did you understand that? No. Didn't get, a, didn't get a word, my friend. What, what were you saying? Oh, I was saying something really important. Oh, did you, did well, you miss well, it? Well, you clearly, we clearly missed it. And, but that sound of the rushing wind, it kind of tells us that when the disciples were there in that moment, like, what would it have been like 
for them. And like you said, you couldn't hear anything, you can't speak through it. Absolutely, it would have been so noisy. Um, and quite surprising, we, when we read it, we forget how surprising it would be. It's not like they've had someone go bing bong, you know, and here's the Holy Spirit. It's like, suddenly, there is a wind in the room. And it's not the kind of wind that we find unpleasant, if you know what I'm saying. There's a wind in the room and it completely takes them by surprise and they're suddenly not able to hear one another. So they're probably saying, oh my goodness, what is this, what is this? But nobody can hear because all they've got is this. And just to make it even worse, they then look around themselves and there's flames on their heads. Yes. Now I painted a picture of this, would you like to see? Oh yeah, I would, tell you yeah, about let's this. go for it. So, um, so this is my picture. Oh nice. Of the, the flames, can you see? So there it is. Thanks mate. So can you imagine that, but coming out of the top of my head? Kind of like this. <laughs> um, I mean, it would be something to turn up on the first day back of church with on, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. But also, can you imagine looking at somebody on fire and how terrifying that might be, but realizing, and you're going, mate, your head's on fire, your head's on fire, and they're going, so is yours. Do you know what I mean? I know, and then, and then you've awesome. got this kind of, it's, 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 but it's, I mean, it looks like, I mean, we need to state, right? It looks like, flames on your head. Yeah, yeah, right? of course. It's not like burning your head. No, there's no one with a fire extinguisher going, <laughs> you know, there's no one needing to do that. <laughs> but that would have to be on the risk assessment, wouldn't it? Like, Oh my days, you know, can you imagine? Yeah. Probably yeah. we didn't do those things. But, no. um, so, so they've got all of this going on and then all of a sudden, the, the flames seem to, I don't know, they disappear, they're not really talked about anymore. And then you get, they all start speaking in different languages. I know. So first of all, we have the wind, and then we have the fire, and then we have the ability to speak Albanian. It's like, wow! <laughs> How is that That's even amazing. a thing? It's can like you imagine the, that? The like, progression like, can you speak that? any languages, Ems? Uh, a, 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 un peu, petit peu. I can speak a tiny bit of French, so I can say, je m'appelle Ems, je suis mariée à John, um, nous avons quatre enfants, which means um, we have four children. Am I impressing you? Not really. That is very good. I mean, I, I, I could have really done with that for my GCSE French, I think, yeah. but it probably wouldn't have gone down well if I'd said, I am called Ems, when my name is Rick. No, it wouldn't. People would have probably needed to pray for you. Yeah, absolutely, right. But you kind of, but then that explains it a little bit, doesn't it? Because they they burst out of where they are and they all start speaking in the different languages. And it's almost like God has orchestrated, pulled together this thing, because at that time there are Jews, Israelites, people who are God's chosen people from all over the world yeah. in Jerusalem. That's right. And each of the disciples are able to communicate and talk and people are able to understand them. Yeah, it's crazy because everyone's in Jerusalem for this big party, this Pentecost party. And what's happening is the disciples go out and the Holy Spirit, as they go out, he's kind of the tongues of fire and the wind has given them that power and that ability to speak in a different language. And they rock up to somebody and start speaking, I don't know, African, an African tongue, or they start speaking French or German or whatever it is. And, and the people are amazed. They're like, uh, you look like a fisherman and yet you're speaking like a professor. How, how is that happening? I it's bonkers and I've even heard of stories even um, in recent years where people have been told by God to go to another country to speak of his uh, good news and the Bible and explain it to people but they haven't been able to speak that language and yet in that time of God giving them the message it's almost like 
he has hit the download button of a whole dictionary of Swahili or whatever it might be. And, and then they go out and they do this stuff with the gift that God has given them. So it's not just then, it's now. Yeah, I was praying with somebody quite recently and um, I asked another lady to come and pray with me for this person. And as we were praying, the, the other lady who was praying with me started speaking in a tongue and um, it sounded really beautiful, um, but I didn't understand it. But the lady who was being prayed for suddenly started to cry. Um, and I said to her, you know, can you tell us what's going on? What are you feeling? And she said, well, the lady praying for me has just spoken over me in Russian. Um, which is my mother's language and what she said to me was dear one or precious one I love you in Russian and she said it felt like Jesus was talking just to me but using my mother's language how powerful is that wow you see like God's doing this stuff today as well as hundreds and thousands of years ago ah that is like it's actually brought tears to my eyes that is incredible that's what the Holy Spirit does to those of you who are watching and you know with me and Em's we're normal people within the well, bounds of normal well, uh, I know, know but you know normal. we are kind yeah. of um, yeah. but we're just followers of Jesus and we're trying to live the stuff that this talks about in our day-to-day -day life um, and actually that chap kind of goes on nicely to then Peter stands up doesn't he in the in the middle of this chapter he stands up and because people are going well they're just they've just had too much to drink you know they've said that everyone you know this is rubbish and and then Peter stands up and gives an incredible preach like it's one that I would really love to be able of just stood up and gone uh, and he did it brilliantly uh, given his history and all of that and then incredible stuff happens off the back of that as well right yeah and i mean if you imagine the disciples have had a pretty crazy day because first they had do you remember we had the wind and then we had the fire and then we had the ability to speak in another language and then we get this guy who has never done a sermon in his life all he's done is basically fish and let jesus down quite a lot remember and then he rocks up with this incredible sermon without even reading a book or writing anything down. And what happens is this massive move of God. And I just think it's amazing that God uses ordinary people like me, like Rick, to do incredible things if we're just open to him. And so 3,000, it's the start of church. Like, it's not like a few, it's 3,000 and you know, it, it just starts this incredible move, which we're still part of. Like, that's church. It will look very different um, because they wouldn't have had the, you know, the nice buildings and the drums and the guitars and sound desks and all of that stuff. They would have just had themselves. And so um, the at the end of it, it, it kind of talks about them sharing everything they had. And just as you have kindly shared uh, your chocolate with me today, um, I think the challenge I would like to throw out to those that are part of us today is, um, yes, enc encounter the Holy Spirit and kind of encourage that, but also what are the things that you could be sharing with other people to help spread God's good news? Um, so, Ems, thank you for being with us. I've absolutely loved it. And um, please, could you pray for us as we encounter Pentecost uh, in a new way. Yes, I will. God, thank you so much for the gift that you gave us of the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Holy Spirit, that you choose to live not just near us, um, but inside us. And thank you that because of that, you go everywhere we go. So we never need to be afraid. And I pray that each of us would be able to share you in a new way this week with somebody that you love and somebody that you want to talk to because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say bye, Ems. Bye. bye. Thanks so much for having me, mate. See you later. It's been great fun. See you later. Bye. bye. Great 
to have uh, Ems with us today. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, so good. And, um, and and guys, we move on to another week. Uh, maybe you're getting ready to go back to school. Maybe um, you're not. Maybe you still know that you've got to be at home. Whichever way, I am praying that you have an incredible week. Bless you guys. See you soon.